Let's go. All right, guys. Welcome to our Monday AMA. As always, um, we're happy to have you all. And it's more of just a informative talk today. A couple, couple things that we'll go over, and then we'll you know dive into some random topics here and there too. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is something that happened over over the weekend, and I want to address it. Um, we had a admin who had been reaching out to people and admin was asking uh, from money from people and um, to some people they were saying that it's uh, to help the Shiba Doge project and to others he was telling them a whole gimmick story of how you know you can send him money and you'll get invested into something and then he'll give you percentages back and this and that. I immediately banned him uh, after I got like five or six people telling me about what's going on. <clears throat> uh, he was a pretty pretty active admin. His name was Tony. I'm sure you guys have seen him around. He's gone now. I don't tolerate things like that because um, first of all, if I didn't know about it, they didn't approach us and he's doing it on the back end of things. It immediately raises a red flag because if it wasn't the scam, he would definitely consult and want to get more info from people like us rather than, you know, just keep it a secret and try to raise money from people in the background. Um, immediately, I was able to recognize that he's trying to scam people. So uh, if you get any DMs from him like that, just, you know, it's all at your own risk, guys. I'm just letting you guys know that I don't tolerate that type of stuff, especially from an admin. There's literally nothing in the space that can guarantee you anything. And when people will tell you, hey, send me this amount of um, funds and I'll guarantee you this amount of funds back, that should immediately raise a red flag to people and just don't get don't get caught up in that kind of stuff, man. Um, especially uh, with the amount of, <clears throat> excuse me, I just got a text. Let me read this one sec. Never mind. Okay. Um, especially with the amount of scams happening in the in the crypto space, you guys always have to be careful. And I I try very very hard to make uh, this community a safe haven um, to block that kind of stuff out. So it really hurts my heart, you know, when um, people who are in the community try to do some crappy stuff like that. So just wanted to let you guys know. I don't want to keep any any secrets or anything like a mystery or anything like that. You know, um, I, I was just able to recognize that something fishy was going on and uh, I didn't have to think twice. It was an immediate decision and uh, that's pretty much it on that. So moving forward, let's go on to a different topic. Uh, everybody had a good weekend, I'm assuming. And if you uh, are here listening, I'm very grateful because we're going to be talking about some cool things that, uh, that are happening. Um, so you know how we did our Thursday Twitter space AMAs and um we did the first one last week i'm gonna be quite frank with you it was 99.9 percent .9 of just me talking which is cool but it's boring definitely really really boring for people to have to listen to just me for you know an, an hour even though some some people enjoy it some people uh love it but uh, let's be honest let's be real it, it needs to get more entertaining and it needs to get more um functional in a sense so uh, I was able to recognize that because I listened to the whole thing over again after it was done and and I liked it, but I was like, hey, this, the whole concept, what I'm doing, and I'm telling you guys right now what I'm doing, um, what we're, we're, we're going to do is we're going to have guests on every single week, whether those guests are different developers, whether they're celebrities, whether they're uh, influencers, whether they're community members or whatever they are, but these guests are... What we'll do is we'll be interviewing each other. We'll be talking about all, all kinds of stuff. So think of it more like a podcast type of thing where we'll be talking about like relative things that are happening in the world, relevant things that are happening in the world, um, just cool topics, cool developments, different projects, our projects, like all kinds of things that we find interesting in the space we're going to be bringing to the table. Uh, I already reached out to a bunch of people over the weekend. I'm going to continue reaching out to people so I can build more of a manifest. Um, I don't know if I have a guest in line this week. I'm actually going to hop on a call with another um, person, another person tomorrow night to actually discuss um, him being a guest. Or is a developer of a very very big blue chip NFT project. I was able to get in touch with them. These guys are 
on a whole different level as far as um, a lot of the other projects in the space go. So um, they do Twitter spaces every week too. And I was listening to one of their Twitter spaces and I really liked how they were doing it. I really liked the concept. And um, I found that they were probably looking for guests too. So I reached out and um, I have a call lined up with them tomorrow. So hopefully maybe we can have them as our first guest for Thursday. Uh, but every week, every Thursday, I want to have a new guest. I want to have someone that's credible and someone entertaining. So you guys can get value out of it. I can get value out of it and they can get value out of it. Community to other communities, other communities will be introduced to our communities and we can, um, actually create a stronger bond with web three like that. And the only people that I'll be choosing to become. I think are uh, running good projects or running something very valuable in the space or doing something valuable for the space. Um, you know, yeah, and even influencers too, like just entertaining people. So moving forward, those Twitter spaces, um, they're not gonna just be me just talking and, you know, boring you guys to death. <laughs> even though sometimes they will be like that if, you know, there's uh, just a very important topic that I need to talk about, but um yeah i think we're gonna have a good time doing that i mean we saw a lot of support guys so thank you guys for all the support all the retweets all the people that joined all the people that shared congrats to the people that um won the prize which we'll be sending out shortly i was uh getting everyone's wallet address that won so i think i got all that now so after this call i'll, I'll put all that together and we'll send it out but yeah i mean um we, one thing we were late on was the Mint Monday drops. We just did those right now um, for the people that minted last week on the Mint Monday special or the week before, I mean. Um, so I definitely apologize for that. That was a mistake on our end. Um, we had closed down the minting before we were able to reserve the ones to send out to the people or something like that happened in between. But um, we got it out to you guys now. Sorry for the delay. We try to make sure things like that never happen, but you got to, you know, understand and forgive us for, for it. We're always good for it. If we promise you guys something, we will 100% of the time follow through on that. So, um, yeah, guys, I mean, moving forward, we're going to be, we having a bunch of fun. Um, and be honest with me too. If you guys ever have any constructive criticism, if you guys think something is getting bland, something is getting boring, something needs to change, tag me or come on these AMAs and just be brutally honest. Like I, I'm not going to get mad. I'm honestly, honestly. going to be happy about that. What's up? Somebody unmuted. Anybody have something to say? Okay. I guess not. So yeah, constructive criticism, like you know, I'm a human too, right? So um, anything that you guys need to get through to me, just, just tell me, I'm not going to get mad about it. I'm not going to, be upset. I'm going to take everything that I hear, every feedback that I get. And, um, every, you know, we, we always look at feedback. So everything is noted and everything is, um, in line to get improved on. <clears throat> um, other than that, we have 44, 45 days left in season two. So we're, we've had a pretty, pretty good, pretty successful season so far. Um, obviously a lot of NFTs have been, staked and a lot of people are taking advantage of the system that we've put out there. Um, one main thing that I left out is uh, this upcoming Thursday, we're going to bring to life a, um, you know how we have Mint Monday specials and we do like Mint Monday stuff. So this week we're changing it up. We're going to do a Thursday event. And this Thursday event is going to correlate with the Twitter spaces. So we're going to be promoting both the Mint event and the Twitter space at the same time. Uh, most likely tomorrow I'll start tweeting about it and I'll start introducing what the, what the plan for the mint event is and what the special is going to be. Um, but yeah, uh, that's one thing I left out. So I, I want to make it so that these Twitter spaces always fall in line with something else that's being promoted to, because it to the project, we saw a lot of people, um, that are not regulars in our community attend that Twitter space, which is amazing. I think we had like, I think we had like 300 or no, 210 live viewers and Roof was telling me we had another like 60 live viewers on YouTube. And then we had a whole bunch of people who listened to it afterwards too. So, 
you know, 300 people, around 300 people live listening is a pretty big deal for our, the first one that we've done. My goal is to have a thousand people live. And I think uh, every week that we get better at doing these, we will achieve that goal very quickly because um, it, it, it's not going to be hard as long as we do everything right and as long as they're entertaining and informative. So I think the guests are going to be really cool. People would like to see um, you know, pe other people that they follow and other influencers in the space uh, beyond those uh, shows. I want to start calling them shows rather than AMAs because they're going to be kind of AMAs and kind of like podcasts, like half and half type deal. So it's all about just, you know, having fun. We're going to have fun uh, as a community. We'll bring people up as well. People will be able to, um, you know, ask us questions, ask the guest questions. And yeah, we won't do like crazy giveaways to bring people in. That's not what it's all about. It's not always about just giveaways to get people in and you know get a foot through the door uh we we could do that but you know then we just attract people who are in it just for the chance to win some money right so that that's not what it's all about what it's about is actually giving them more than that and which is the knowledge and kind of like uh just information that you can't find anywhere else like true information coming from our heart and coming from our guests hearts that um you know is pretty much invaluable because I do believe that we we know some things um, that other people would love to know in a sense, right? And um, you guys have been learning those things as you spend time in these communities and as we share our thoughts and as we share our experiences. So I think we could definitely help a lot of people out and make a lot of cool content and a lot of uh, headway in this process. And um that first twitter space really proved a lot to me even even if it was just me rambling on for an hour which was kind of boring after i listened to it uh over again it was really boring for me um that's probably because it's just me but um you know i'm putting myself in uh, other people's shoes and i'm sure they all feel you know some type of way about it so i got that idea about bringing the guests on and other people had actually even mentioned things like that too in the past so if you mentioned it you know Thank you guys, because those types of things do get stuck in the back of my head. Maybe I might not uh, react to it immediately, but uh, those ideas get planted. So you guys do a tremendous job of planting great ideas um, that I don't even know that they're going to be great ideas until one day it all clicks and they're like, oh, oh, crap, that is a great idea. So um, there are a lot of big projects who would love to collab with us in the sense. So the point of the AMAs moving forward on Twitter, for example, they're not going to be to pump our token. They're not going to be to pump the whole, uh, guest's token. That's not what it's about. We're not going to be pumping anything in these like Twitter spaces. We're going to be actually just like treating it like a podcast, like a show and like something that can be entertaining moving forward and something that people would look forward to uh, listening to every single week just because of how, how great it is. So um you know, be patient with us because it will take maybe, you know, a few tries to kind of nail down a, a perfect um, way of doing it. But we're going to give it our best shot and we're going to make sure that we can adapt and, um, you know, make them as good as they possibly can be. Um, I was about to say something else and then I completely forgot. So that usually happens when it's something important. Um, shoot, what was I going to say? Yeah, sorry, I completely forgot what I was my next thing that I was going to go into. <laughs> um, if anybody has anything that they want to uh, address or talk about, you know, feel free to unmute yourself and and ask while I try to remember my next topic, my next subject. <laughs> I don't know why I forgot. It usually happens when something really important that you want to talk about, you just completely forget. It. You space out. Anyone got any questions? Rufin. Yeah, anything on your end, Ruf, if you got anything that you want to address or anything that you want to say on, on your behalf. I know you're in here all day um, talking to people anyway, so. Um. Yeah, um, you know, just want to say thanks for giving Jumper, well, you're going to be giving Jumper $200 for that video we made. And that's really crazy to me. I mean, 
Yeah, so Ruth, you want to give a breakdown? While we have everybody in here, you want to give a breakdown on how the new shill wheel is going to be working and um, yeah, yeah. So how people could participate? Yeah. Yeah. So this week we're gonna do uh twenty three spins. I think I spoke to you, Leo, and we was gonna do um, a bit less, but we just me and nobody decided this week. We'll just do twenty three spins, and the last spin will be a hundred dollars. Okay. The first, the twenty-two okay. spins will be fifty dollars, and the last spin will be a um, hundred dollars. Um, so I mean, like the the shill army are really happy with that, um, because they've got more of a chance of winning now, whereas before it was only ten, right? So yeah, exactly. Um, so anyone that wants to get involved in this, just I'll drop the link. Um, just join the shill army. And uh, you just chill all week, which we should be doing anyways. And at the end of the week, um, on Monday, we do a uh, a spin, and uh, we give away a lot of money. So uh, yeah, we're giving away about we're giving away about five thousand dollars a month um, doing these these wheel spins, which is pretty significant considering we're doing we've done it for. Uh, about 10 months now so that's about fifty thousand dollars just on shield wheels that we've get, given away um yeah that's pretty cool and i i never thought of it like that but these people who are taking advantage of the shield wheel and actually uh participating i i believe it's a pretty small pool of people that um are in there i think it's like 50 people who are yeah. consistent like ogs in the shield wheel and um you know th that uh those funds that that are uh dedicated to that are really helping a, a group of people out and you know depending on what parts of the world these people are from that's a very significant amount of money even if they win a hundred dollars even if they win fifty dollars but for participating that can uh, depending on you know what parts of the world they live like i said that can pay the bills for an entire month that could feed your family for an entire month so um we find it very important to continue to do as much little things like this as we possibly could because uh at the end of the day we're we're helping a lot of people subconsciously um while our project grows so um we just feel very proud to be able to do things like that obviously you know it helps the project the shilling definitely 100 percent helps the project tremendously but we, we want to make sure we can you know reward people for that every now and then too so and this is the only way they can lot of them this is the only way they can actually buy a bag of fever dose you know That's yeah cool. yeah the people who are really like dedicated to the shilling and just do it like you know religiously th those are the people who um really don't have any other means or any other funds of being able to support themselves uh you know um in web3 and be able to you know invest in things and you know have the luxury to buy an nft or have the luxury to buy tokens so you know, giving people an opportunity to to um, be involved is is pretty huge too. Exactly. One guy contacted me yesterday and he said he hopes that he wins uh, fifty dollars today because if he does, then uh, he'll be able to get his first NFT. You know, he's been saving. He won a hundred dollars before, and if he wins fifty, then obviously he can buy one of the fevers or the OGs. So he's really happy about that. So it's giving the community, the people that can't afford it to, you know, have a way of uh, buying the tokens, buying the NFTs, you know, because they love the project. I mean, a lot of them have been chilling um, for nothing for a long time. They've just been chilling because they yeah. love the project. So I've been looking, I've been looking at a lot of like shills. I've been looking at not, not just our shills but i've been looking at the greater like majority of shills happening in web3 and like you know all kinds of random tokens and this and that and <clears throat> i found our shills to be a lot more uh educational and a lot more graphical and a lot more like less intrusive right because there are those shills that you see and you're like oh my god i can't believe it not another one another one mm -hmm. but ours are more like you, you they catch your eye you know they're informative um they might be a clip they might be a nice piece of artwork just nothing that people look at and they're like oh it's just another token that i'm seeing on my feed and and that's the important thing is you know we we're not like just any other project we're we really are not we're 
a lot of other projects, 99% of other projects are in here for one main reason. And that one main reason is to try to manipulate as many people as they can. That's the hard truth, right? That, that's the, that's a hard fact. I hate to say it about the space, but a lot of the, the space, the people in DeFi and the space are, are in it for bad intentions, man. And I feel like us with the, the amount of uh, time that we spend with you guys, the connection that we have with the community and just the greatness of the people involved, like especially the community, community when I say this, you guys are all good hearted people from, from what I can tell. And that everybody that I deal with on a, on a daily basis, weekly basis, you know, you guys are all just good people. And that's the thing is these people on uh web three who are actually doing things with bad intentions they're not hurting bad people they're hurting good people so our, i want to combat that i want to show the world that no you know shiba doge a pure project people with good hearts can actually make it and they can actually make it past those greedy people who are trying to screw everybody over left and right and i mean no matter how hard it is to, to prove that point, no, no matter how tough it gets, we're not going to stop. We're not going to give up. We're going to keep pushing. We're going to keep developing. We're going to keep empowering. And we're going to keep revolutionizing as much as we can uh, until that goal is reached. And that, that goal is a very, very long-term goal because you know the amount of success in my book is not a million dollars. It's not a hundred million dollars. It's priceless, right? So you, I can't put a value on success. It's just a value of vision, in my opinion, and our vision is vast and our vision keeps growing every day because I'm personally learning a lot of things every day too. Um, I might right. learn something tomorrow that that'll completely just change the whole game, right? I might be like, holy crap, this is what we're missing. This is the key and start, you know, building something new on top of that. So those types of things happen, guys. It's, um, it's very, very important to keep an open mind because an open mind is a great mind. And uh, the people who don't think outside of the box and are just kind of like tunnel vision in one certain scenario and don't like to make a left or a right turn to you know, see what the long path would, would entail, those, those people, they're, they're honestly going to struggle a little bit more than the people with the open mind because with the open mind, you can adapt. With the open mind, you can innovate. With the open mind, you can you know, bring new things to life. And that's one thing uh, the team and myself are very uh, adamant on is that we like to do research, market research, and we like to, uh, you know, learn new things every day. I'm, my brain is like a sponge. As much as I know about the space and as much as I know about finance and as much as I know about, you know, building communities, I'm still learning things every single day. And I find that one of the most valuable things for me is that I actually put myself in scenarios to learn things where other people don't put themselves in scenarios to learn things. A lot of people will spend their free time doing things that are counteractive to learning, right? And that's cool too, because I, a lot of times I like to chill and I like to unwind and play video games or watch movies or this and that too. You have to do that every now and then. But a lot of times what I do is I, I might be sitting at home and I might just be doing a lot of research, you get what I'm saying? And, and looking into uh, I might even look into failed projects from the past, like from years ago, and I, I'll look into them and dissect them and look at their contracts and look at what they did and look at their old tweets and this and that. Why, why do I do that? Even if they're a failed project is because they might have had the idea, the one idea, the great idea, but they were not able to execute on. Right. So if, if I can learn something new, uh, it's valuable, right? Because if I can learn something new and introduce it to, to our community too, then it's valuable. Even though we have a lot of things that are in the pipeline, even though we have a million things that we're you know, envisioning, it doesn't sidetrack me from continuously trying to get better and continuously trying to innovate too. And um, to be honest, a lot of inspiration comes from people who have already built things. Um, that just, that's just a given and that's happened throughout history with cars, with planes, with computers, with software, with websites, with everything, right? So it's, you know, you always need to look at what others are doing to find inspiration. And, and we do that as well. I, I ain't trying to say we copy anyone because we don't. That's not what we try to do. 
at all, ever. Uh, we, we get inspired. We put our own twist to things if we need to, and we build on top of that because we are very creative people and we are people who, uh, you know, come up with things on our own, uh, very, very frequently. Uh, but you know, a, a lot of times it's, it's about finding inspiration and you got to look in the right places to find inspiration and just know that, uh, moving forward our after our one year anniversary, you know, a lot of things are going to, uh, start rolling out because obviously we have the third iteration of the NFTs that are going to be coming out, which is going to be a game changer. Um, and once we get that out and once that um workload is pretty much offloaded from the entire team because it's all hands on deck to get that out once that's out and and done we have a full workforce that's going to be prepared to start building the next big thing and that's the beautiful part uh that i'm very much so excited about is uh continuously having things in the pipeline and continuously having things being built and the more we can build and the more we can introduce and the more utility that we have as a project, even though we are, we strive to be the biggest meme coin in the world one day, that would be a dream come true for us, for me especially too. That would be a nice goal, nice milestone for us. Um, we don't want to just only be a meme coin, right? We want to be able to offer uh, utility. We want to be able to offer some uh, revolutionary things in the space. and. The, the biggest meme of all would be a meme coin creating the next biggest thing in Web3. <laughs> that would be the biggest right. meme of all, right? Yeah. So that's what we strive to do. And we strive to uh, achieve greatness. And everybody should strive to achieve greatness. I mean, regardless of, you know, whether you try to find it in this space or in your professional life or at home or whatever, just try to be the greatest version of yourself and try to be the greatest uh, just be the best at what you do. If you want to mow lawns for a living, try to be the best lawnmower there is in the world. And I guarantee you, you'll be successful. So, <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what field of business you are or what you're trying to do or your hobby. As long as you try to be the best at it, you will, you will do good and you will outperform people and you will, you will see uh, goals met and you will see milestones broken. So, you know, I don't mean to get all into it and all inspirational and this and that again, guys. I'm just kind of like venting to you all like I normally do. But um, let's open the floor up. If anybody has anything to uh, say, come up and, and speak, please. Um, um, website. People have been asking about the website. Like the people build website. What's going on with that? Is that done or? Um, I don't think it's fully done. I know um, Alex and and. Uh, cause have been talking. Uh, I personally don't ever really ever get involved really get on involved. that end. Coming soon. Go ahead, Kaz. Go ahead, Kaz. Coming soon. Coming soon. Uh, uh, the the uh, well, the rest of the team have obviously been very hard at work with their knee deep in doing stuff for the uh, for the Shiba Doge NFT stuff and interface and that not uh, and that stuff. Um, so um, they're going through. They'll be going through what is. Uh, has been built for the website and hopefully we should get all that wrapped up by the end of the month hopefully this week i, I mean you're free i mean you're free to give an update cause if you want like what's the um what would you say is the excuse me one second i'm getting a phone call let me just mute that i'm waiting um, for final, i'm waiting for final sign off um everything's everything the site has all been built uh i've built a whole new api back end which is now running on shibado servers uh, to support everything that it needs. Um, and uh, yeah, it's all just waiting for the team to sort of go over it, any final tweaks that need doing. But um, yeah, it's it's been ready for a while, actually. Okay, perfect. Well, there you guys have it. So um, after this call, I'll, I'll go check into it because I'm kind of curious to see when we're going to go over that because I haven't, I, I haven't even seen it myself yet because I've, I've been so busy with other things that, um, mm -hmm. you know, Max and... Alex, I've been taking care of that, and I know that I know that they've been really busy too. So I'll check yeah. in with them, and let's try to see if we can get that accelerated. And and um, obviously, yeah, we we need to get it updated, you know, sooner than later. And yeah, I mean, if you guys been on our website recently, you you can definitely agree that it needs a revamp and definitely needs a facelift. So um, Cos was the first to point that out months, months, months ago, <laughs> when nobody else really 
uh, paid too much attention yeah, to it. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Kaz was paying attention to it. And, you know, that's a very good eye on that end because a good website is uh, very, very important in the space of anything that you do, right? If you, if you uh, have a professional thing going on, you got to best believe that you need a professional website to, to back it. That's right. Right on. Cool. Anyway, so yes, it's all coming. Awesome, man. Awesome. Thank you. I'm sure you did a great job. I, I haven't looked into it at all, but like I said, I'm going to be looking into it um, myself too very soon. And uh, I'm sure you did a great job because I, I, I know that you're pretty advanced in that and that's your, your forte, your specialization. So I'm happy that we were able to work together in order to get something done. Yeah, man. And, uh, and, and, you know, once that first stage is done, <clears throat> I got a whole load of other ideas up my sleeve for it. <laughs> Perfect. That's what I love to hear. All right. Take it easy. You too, bro. What's up, Junkie? Oh, sorry about that. I, was, I hit the mic by accident. Oh, that's okay, man. How are you? Everything good? Yeah, yeah, everything's good, man. I miss everybody. I kind of been out a little bit, but I'm still, I'm still in. Just driving home from work right now. That's right, bro. Have a have a nice drive. Well, anyone else want to say anything before I mute the mic and speak? Yeah, I just wanted to say something to uh, the community. Uh, just, just. Uh, you know, Leo spoke about some of the stuff earlier. Like this, this community and these divs here are definitely have the best interests of the community, and they don't want to see anybody get scammed. Uh, and anytime any anything is brought to their attention, it seems like they're they're on it. Uh, they want to do everything they can to keep keep people educated and keep people safe. I mean, I I, I encounter uh, all sorts of different scams. I've been in this space for a long time, and I, I will admit I've been scammed before. Um, and and to see a community that is in the divs of the community that are so uh, uh, prompt to to try to make sure people stay safe and they don't put put funds or link connect to things that people are trying to rip people off is is pretty awesome because you don't see that in this in this space especially when it's you know, nobody really knows who anybody is and people can just be super sketchy and, and cheating people left and right and our divs in this in this community and and the majority of us, all the community members you know want want to better everybody and, and to and to watch out for one another and that's it's a really cool thing to see what actions are done and 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 to, and to address things and to talk about it uh it's really cool because i i've been scammed in other communities and you never hear anything from the people that are in charge of that community. It's kind of like, oh, screw you, tough luck. You should have been smart. But it's yeah, not man. like that in this community at all. And, and to yeah. you guys, you guys are amazing. Thank you, John. Yeah, man, I've also been scammed too when I first um, got introduced to this space. And uh, I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit. So I was um, I was scammed. Um, and that that's how, like, created the paranoid version of me that loses sleep every time I hear somebody else got scammed or get scammed. Like I really lose sleep when I hear like one of our community members got scammed or this or that. Like I really feel bad about it because I've been there and it's not a good feeling to get scammed. So there was this company and this project a long time ago called BitConnect. I don't know if any of you guys have heard of it, but BitConnect was like this huge thing that was happening early on in the crypto space. And it was attracting so much attention and it was like a multi-market leveling pyramid scheme that these like people have built and um, they, they were like selling this whole dream that, hey, you invest a thousand dollars and then you can do like compound interest and they have a super smart bot that trades uh, cryptos back and forth and guarantees you money, this and that, whatever it was, you know some just some load of crap and it was huge it was big like they had like millions of people that were investing into this ponzi scheme thing that they were doing and me being myself you know um and me being very new to, to crypto at the time or it was probably like very very early in my stage of crypto um i i learned about it and i started talking to some people who were investing something like that and, and i tested it out for about a month 
I was like, oh, cool. Yeah, you know, this is cool. It's working. I, I, I think I put in like 4K and, and in a month I made like $900 and I was extremely happy about that. I'm like, why don't I just put a lot more? So I put a lot more into it. I'm not comfortable saying how much, but I put a lot more into it. And um, like literally two months later, they pulled the plug on the thing, right? And they scammed everyone. I think it was like close to a couple billion dollars that they scammed and, and stole from people. And it was bad because I, I lost a lot of money in that, that scam. And so did a lot of my friends that um, were in there as well, too. And it was it was dark times because that that was a lot of uh, money for me to lose at the time, too, because, you know, I, at that time, I was by no means uh, rich. I, I was by no means like well set off. I was I had a good you know amount of money stacked here and there, but that was a big loss for me. And I was just really, really upset, really mad that I got scammed. I was more upset at myself that I let it happen, too. Um, and ever since then, I, I've been paranoid about scammers. I've hated scammers. and I've always made sure I could do anything in my power to avoid other, uh, getting other people in that situation. So yeah, if you guys haven't heard about the BitConnect scam, do like a YouTube search on it. Uh, there are some pretty cool short documentaries you could watch. It was actually pretty, pretty intense. Uh, the amount of money that those people were able to scam out of people and the amount of people that got hurt in the process of it was pretty intense, man. And, you know, Karma is a big thing, and I, I I believe in karma, and you know, I, I just I don't know, I don't really want to comment more onto it, but it, check it out because it is definitely a very very big event in the world of crypto that happened. It's part of crypto history. That's how big it is. Um, you guys should definitely check it out and learn a thing or two about it. I'll, I'll share maybe a link. I'll look I'll look at a YouTube link later on and see if I can find a good video and. I'll share it with you guys, but you guys are more than welcome to look into it too. It was, it was massive, man. It was crazy. It's okay. It's okay, man. Uh, it was a big learning experience for me. And then things like that, that uh, happened in the past, you know, really structured and sculpted me into the person I am today. And, you know, even even things that are negative that happen in your life, you got to you got to learn from them, man. You got to make sure you do everything that you can to take the best out of every possible outcome and, you know, just make yourself a, hum a better human being out of it, just a better person. Just strive to be the best person that you could possibly be. Like I said, uh, karma is real. Try to do as many good things as you possibly can, no matter how big, no matter how small. And good things will happen to you in return. You may not see them happening to you um, and you may not be able to recognize it, but best believe the universe does pay its debts and it, it, it very, very well uh, pays its debts whenever it wants. <laughs> There's no timeline on the universe paying you back, but it will do it. And that, that's one thing that you guys have to remember is uh, just do good and good will happen to you. Um, well said. Yeah. So, what would you say to the people that are a bit afraid of the bear mafia situation right now? You know, I would say being afraid is an emotion, and I do not like to get emotions involved in um, in in this types of situations, guys. Uh, I would I would say the best way to beat fear is to combat it with knowledge. And knowledge is very important because knowledge is not an emotion. Knowledge is a trait, right? So right. the more knowledgeable you are in something, the less afraid of it you'll be. If, if someone told me to build a spaceship right now, I'd be afraid of the task because I know nothing about it. But if I knew how to build a spaceship, I would not be afraid. I'd be like, oh, let's do it, right? So just educate yourself, guys. Um, yeah, the bear market is is a scary thing. Let's uh you know let's let's face it but the the fact of the matter is the bear market is something that we've seen throughout history multiple multiple times and um one thing that history has also proven is that a bull market follows a bear market and a bear market follows a bull a bear market follows a bull market so it's a cycle it, this cycle happens the cycle needs to happen 
This cycle teaches a lot. This cycle gives a lot, and it also takes a lot. So it's it's all about you know being along for the full ride. Can can you stick along uh along long enough for the full ride? And that's that's the test that you know these types of situations give to people. And you know don't don't let them scare you out of your positions. Is is you know what I could say. Don't let them scare you. Um, just always try to do as much as you can to learn more about situations, look at history, look at things that um, similar events that happened in the past and kind of compare them to what's happening right now. And you'd be able to kind of uh, diagnose what the outcome is going to be. That's what I do. And that's what makes me feel confident in the moves that I make. Um, and for me, I, I got to tell you guys, I have a pretty good success rate at the, at the decisions that I make. And a lot of it because, uh, is because I look at history and I look at what happened after a uh, dramatic fall, what happened after a dramatic rise, what happened after a certain amount of consolidation, what happens is everything that we're going through right now has happened before in history just in different ways, shapes, and forms, but it's happened. And history does not lie. Uh, the future can be predicted by looking at the past. So don't be afraid. Right. Just uh, get knowledge, get, 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 you know, more involved in knowledge. Um, and the only way you could do that is apply yourself to the research that's needed. I won't be able to help you guys on that end. Only you can help you, yourself on that end because you first need to want it. You first need to want to um, learn more about what you're interested in and you know there's a million things that you can read there are books you can read there are articles there are youtube videos there are movies there are all kinds of things that you can watch that uh, will give you hints and clues and knowledge about those things but I, I know personally i've dedicated a lot of time into looking at this type of stuff and you know the the outcomes have been uh proven the outcomes have been proven for me and that's what I go based off of. I, I the, my main my main point of focus is to look at history. Right, right. So um, Ethereum, can you just let people know how it affects our market cap, how it's linked, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I'm just gonna make a small example out of it. Let's say one Shiba Doge token is worth uh, one Ethereum, right? Uh, that's not what it's worth, but I'm just giving an example. Since they're paired on on um, Uniswap, obviously ETH and Shiba Doge is paired together as a um, as a unit. So let's say one Shiba Doge token costs one ETH, and let's say ETH is one thousand dollars right now, exactly one thousand dollars. That would mean that, uh, and let's say there is only ten Shiba Doge tokens, so. A thousand times ten, so you have ten thousand dollar market cap, for example, because ETH is worth a thousand dollars. One ETH, uh, one ETH. What happens if ETH goes to three thousand dollars? Then the market cap of those ten tokens goes to thirty thousand dollars. Why? Because it's tied in, linked with ETH, and that's what kind of influences the um, fiat, for example, value that we put on it. Uh, if you really want to diagnose it further, uh, a lot of people don't look at market cap per se. They look at um, just the price of ETH itself. And because market cap is kind of irrelevant when you're looking at pairs, um, market cap is just market cap because it can, it can fluctuate with the main token, which is Ethereum. So as Ethereum fluctuates, so does the market cap. Um, people look more into how much ETH is pulled into the liquidity. And there has to be a very, there has to be a very healthy amount of ETH in a liquidity pool for it to be sustainable. And I, I think we have like over a thousand Ethereum in the in the liquidity pool. Um, I think at our highest and uh, at our all time high, we had I think like eighteen or sixteen hundred. So pretty healthy amount, pretty good amount. Obviously, it keeps getting more and more as uh, transactions come in and out because there is a dedicated. Uh, 5% uh, tokenomics that keeps adding to the liquidity pool. 
And the liquidity pool is super important because that's what allows people to freely go in and go out and, you know, make decisions that they need to make. And uh, without it, you know, ever having to, without it having to crash anything, right, for example. So we've seen some big whales uh, uh, sell in the past and we're going to see big whales buy in the future. And, you know, that this types of stuff always happen. But the reason why these types of stuff are able to happen in the first place is because the liquidity pool exists to begin with. And obviously it's a free market. People will do as they please, but us being able to maintain a healthy liquidity pool and being able to maintain a healthy um, pair is what will continue to help the project grow for the long run. And I think with the amount that, uh, not the amount, but the, the, the way that it's been working and the way that it's uh, structured, uh, we have a good amount right now, but in the next bull run, when that next bull run happens and we start getting a lot of attention, we're going to have a very, very nice foundation to start with. And I think we're in an amazing place right now. And for anybody who's wondering, um, pretty much 88%, I believe, 88% of the entire liquidity is locked, baked into the Shiba Doge contract. It's not accessible by me. It's not accessible by Peter. It's not accessible by anybody. It's locked in the contract. You guys could read the code. You guys can have a hire a full, full on professional developer to tell you to. Uh, it doesn't matter. But only about 12% is locked on a third party site, which is called Unicrypt, I believe. And um, things because that gives people peace of mind knowing that the liquidity is untouchable, it is 100% safe. And that that's one thing that made the biggest sense to me, because why is Bitcoin such a successful and powerful project is because the liquidity is also locked and baked and baked in. Right. And nobody can access that. Nobody could touch it. it. That decentralization factor is there. Super important. And, you know, we strive to make sure that everyone can feel safe. And obviously, we're never going to be able to. Uh, make everyone feel 100% safe because there's always people who think they know what they're talking about, especially in this space, they'll come in and, and just say random things without any backing. But we're always super transparent and we try to teach you guys as things uh, progress too. So, you know, it's super important to know that everything is locked and it will continue to stay locked forever. Um, if anyone wants to say anything, just unmute your mic and speak. Let's take this to the moon, boys. Come on, let's help these divs out. Let's shell the crap out of this. <laughs> let's do it, baby. Our time will come. What's up, buddy? How you doing? How you doing what was that? I'm good, man. How are you? Brian, I just want to say a big thanks to you. Thank you, bro. Thanks. Uh, I really appreciate that. God bless you, sir. Thank you, man. God bless you, too. I appreciate you joining us today, and I appreciate you listening in. Thanks. I think the other guy was just saying, to the moon. <laughs> to the moon is a good way. It's a good phrase. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else, guys? You got anything to say at all? What's going on, guys? And I'll be really doing the grid. I'll be doing What's some content for Super Dodge. Awesome, man. Thank, thank you. Finish. Thank you. We appreciate it. Um, I just uh, wanted to say, um, the whole thing with like Bitboy Crypto and like SBF and uh, FTX uh, exchange and like all that stuff that's going on. Um, I I saw it, bro. I saw I saw the rant that he did, where he like kind of went off on on that one dude. Um, yeah. And I I saved a couple clips that I I want to watch, uh, but I haven't watched them just yet. You want to fill us in on what's going on? Uh, I'm not that familiar with it, but it's something like um, like a some kind of like Bitcoin license that FTX is apparently trying to get, so that basically you can only trade within 
their exchange, I think. And so basically it would take away the DeFi aspect of crypto, I think. Like I said, I'm not that up to date on it. I was hoping maybe you would be so I could get filled in myself. But um yeah. It's definitely yeah, something, something to look to, into. Yeah, I could tell you kind of on a like broad um uh this this will let, let me start from the very beginning, right? Let's start back in like two thousand and uh, 10 for example so in 2010 there was really no exchanges around where you can go in and freely buy say because bitcoin was the only main one around back then so what people were doing is they were <clears throat> paypaling um paypaling money to some you know white page white labeled website like there's a and these were people who just owned Bitcoin and they were selling it to other people. Like that's how, that's how people were buying Bitcoin because they didn't know how else to buy it. And then exchanges started coming out and people started buying Bitcoin on exchanges, but who were they buying the Bitcoin from? The, these exchanges were just people who were buying Bitcoin from other sources and kind of like hoarding it for themselves so they would go and buy like a million bitcoins for example not a million i'm just saying a million but let's say they bought a million bitcoins and they were like oh hey you know let's just be an exchange now so they would just start a website and they'd become an exchange <laughs> so that, that's how simple it was at one point obviously a lot of exchanges scam people like that too um you know there were some huge ones that there are massive articles about but now there's a lot of credible exchanges like a lot there's a lot of credible exchanges if you go to uh, coin market cap and you can you know hit the exchange tab you'll be able to see a bunch of them but what's going on now is ftx is trying to monopolize the fact that only they want to they want to be the only exchange that sells bitcoin and why do they want to do that because it's if they're the only exchange in the world that that sells bitcoin they're going to probably be the most valuable exchange in the world so what are they trying to do is they're trying to lobby lawmakers. They're trying to lobby politicians. They're trying to lobby like them achieve that goal by getting that Bitcoin license, which would essentially make it so that any other um, exchange that's trying to sell Bitcoin or exchange Bitcoin won't be able to. Uh, I don't see that happening, but then again, you never know. Uh, but I personally don't see it happening. Um, and the whole BitBoy thing, why he's so upset about it is because, you know, he understands and he sees that, you know, these people are trying to uh, sway the decision by lobbying people and that it's just a crap license to begin with. Like, you shouldn't be able to monopolize Bitcoin. It definitely should stay decentralized and it will stay decentralized even if that... Um, even if that bill passes and even if that Bitcoin license is issued, Bitcoin will still always be the decentralized because you can move, you can buy uh, Bitcoin and move it to a cold wallet and hold it uh, off chain, just like everyone should be doing. But the only difference would be like the only place that you'd be able to actually purchase, buy or sell Bitcoin would be on FTX. So I don't see it happening, but it's definitely something to keep your eye out for. Well, you see, like what I had heard was that um, basically like if that does go through is that if you were to, you know, buy some Bitcoin from FTX and then transfer it to a cold wallet and then do, you know, like say I bought some Shiba Doge from Uniswap, um, that would you would therefore at that point in time be considered a criminal, like you'd be breaking the law within the United States, like anywhere else in the world you could do it still, but within the United States, you would actually be considered a criminal. Um, and that's yeah. what's the deal about it. Yeah, exactly. So you're actually in a, in a way you're right, because if you buy Bitcoin off of FTX, you're going to have to, you know, be doxxed to FTX in order to purchase anything from them anyway, because you're putting your bank or your credit card or whatever on file over there. And then you move it to an off chain wallet, they're automatically going to know that that off chain wallet is yours. So they'll, uh, they'll be able to track it back to you. So yeah, I get it. Yeah, it's bad for the space if it happens. But that's why I don't know if I, I don't see it happening, man, but it's definitely something that us as people who are dedicated to, um, you know, letting DeFi grow and letting DeFi actually be a 
you know, a factor in the future, we have to go out there and support decentralization. So even if that takes just one retweet, if you see something that's retweet to uh, support decentralization, just do it, man, because, you know, it helps. I mean, it, we are going to have to fight these lawmakers one way or another. And, you know, these people are the greediest people in the world. And it, it's crazy how corrupt a lot of governments can be and a lot of politicians can be. And, you know, we definitely don't want to see drama like that happening in our space um, of crypto, especially with Bitcoin. I, I, I love Bitcoin. and I think Bitcoin is the greatest thing that was ever invented. Um, you know, credit to everything Bitcoin has done. And I, I definitely want to see it grow and prosper uh, because if Bitcoin grows and prospers, so will every every other crypto. And, you know, think of Bitcoin as like the heart and think of everything else as you know, the operating system of lungs and um, kidneys and whatever else, right? So, <laughs> yeah, it's important. It's important for us to support that fight however we can. But I'm going to do a little bit more research on my end and and see what exactly is going on. But I do have a few clips that I saved that I want to watch over. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely something to look into. Um, also, I was just real quick, um, if I could. Um, it was real interesting. I came across earlier this week, uh, like the original, I guess, like the original goal of Bitcoin, um, how mm -hmm. it was, like, they wanted to um, basically like make it to where governments couldn't, you know, like influence, you know, money and all that, or like wars, it had to do with wars. And so they couldn't fund wars if they couldn't control the money. And then like, basically it would end up making world peace and that the actual like purpose of Bitcoin overall, that originally was like, to make world peace uh, pretty interesting yeah yeah it's definitely interesting and I, I read that too and that that's a good point but what what we saw with the recent wars that happened um a lot of a lot of um crypto funding went to these wars right um and i think most of it like 100 percent of it almost was probably to support people who were suffering from the wars that were happening right like you know helping civilians and helping people who need the money but then again it's like how much how much of that money went to funding like uh operations right so uh that's something that you really can't track either that, which is like one negative part that i could see but other than that it, i can really see Bitcoin taking over the entire global um, financial system because I was I was looking at a tweet the other day too and these guys were in Brazil or they were in Argentina and they ordered they were having a big dinner and I think the dinner came out to like four hundred dollars um, and they were with like a bunch of people like 30 40 people and it was a four hundred dollar bill and um, they paid with Argentinian money, but it's so inflated that four hundred dollars in Argentina was like sixteen million Argentinian uh, dollars. So they had oh, filled up like a no, whole no, no. stack. It was like a whole stack, like maybe four pounds, five pounds of bills, just to pay that dinner bill. But literally, Bitcoin could solve that issue in an instant, in a second. Not just Bitcoin, but like crypto in general can solve that issue in a literal second and you know it can fix inflation if governments allow it to happen you get what i'm saying so eventually that's what the world needs uh, you know obviously right now the us dollar is technically a global currency and is used around the entire world and every other uh, currency is kind of paired with usd anyway so it's like why not just pair everything up with Bitcoin and just use Bitcoin or use crypto uh, in general to, you know, fund everything. It, it will make the world function so much better. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. I do. Yeah. And one more last thing I promise to let someone else come up, but um, it's a cool little app that I found yesterday. It's called Wander, um, like W-O-N-D-E-R. And it's a, a, it's a, it generates pictures. You type in anything you want, like Shiba Doge to the moon. And it generates through an AI program a pic picture, and so it's an AI generated picture, and you can actually take the picture after you make it. And they're pretty cool the pictures it makes, and then you can save them, and you can actually turn them into NFTs. 
if you want and you can actually resell them and it's pretty cool so yeah that's pretty cool i've been um so uh, our other dev alex he actually um sent over a bunch of images the other day to me and i was like looking at these images and they're um, they're like beautiful and so i've never seen anything like them and i'm like you know staring at them and i'm going through them you know and i'm like looking at these things and you know i can see like little easter eggs of like shiba doge i can see like little easter eggs of my name leo i can see like all kinds of stuff i'm like what are these dude like where'd you get these he's all like oh i just generated them with ai i made them with ai yeah. like, holy crap <laughs> yeah so dude, really dude, cool. ai yeah. yeah ai is insane man ai is gonna take over the world one day it's kind of kind of crazy how how advanced it is um i don't know if you guys saw the um what facebook built so there's this language i don't know what language it's called but it's considered the hardest language in the world and the reason why it's the hardest language in the world is because it can only be spoken you can only speak that language you can't read it and you can't write it so there's no way to study that language other than just listening and talking so for you know ever since the beginning of time or ever since the beginning of you know that language i mean uh, no one has been able to transcribe it, right? No one's been able to translate it or anything because there is no written format to it. But Facebook created this AI that can listen to that language. And keep in mind throughout human history, no one has been able to translate this language into words on like letters and words on paper. Uh, I don't know how they haven't been able to, but they haven't been able to. But Facebook created an AI that was able to literally communicate back and forth with people who could speak that language and write text and um, captions for what it means. And it literally blew my mind. I was watching. I was like, wait, what the heck is going on right now? I, mean, I didn't even know there was a language like that to begin with. And, you know, just technology was able to, to solve that issue. It, it's pretty crazy. I mean, we could live without it. <laughs> We could, we've been doing just fine without it, but you know, there are companies out there like, you know, these billion dollar companies that they're, they're getting bored with everything else that's going on and they're dibble dabbling in AI, whether it's going to be good or bad for humanity. I don't know, but it's, that's one thing that is like, you know, out of the movies. Wow. That's cool. I'm going to look that up. Yeah. Just look it up. If you look up Facebook AI, um, here, I'll try to find it real quick and put it in the chat. Yeah, I'm done. If anyone else has any questions or wants to say anything, um, please go ahead. I don't want to hold the floor too long. Hey, TD. Hey, TD. What's up, TD? How are you, bro? Hey Leo, hey. how are you? Hey bro. Good brother. Hey, hey, real quick. I you know, I, I I just have a couple of minutes, my kids are all dragging me out. So today is uh you know, I'm from India folks, and uh today is Diwali for us. It's one of the biggest festivals in India. And uh just wanted to give a quick background. First and foremost, Leo, what a positive AMA. Amazing, and you know, I I was listening, listening, and I'm like, okay, I need to synthesize this in my mind a little bit. So I'll take a few seconds here just to you know um, put this together, uh, and also it relates back to my my day of celebration, Diwali today. So just want to let you all know, folks, um, what is Diwali? Diwali is basically uh, celebrated for. Uh, conquering good over evil, right? It's also a festival of light. And think for a minute, what does light do? It radiates positivity, right? And how do we relate this? Think for another minute, how do we relate that with Shiva Doge? The dev, as well as community, us, all of us, right? We radiate with positivity and we aim to infect the world with joy. I personally believe that. And whenever I hear uh, Leo, it gets cemented, right? And again, come to think about it, what does that mean? What does radiating positivity mean? Think, think, double click into it. it. It's attracting more people, right? Make other people happier. Make yourself happier, right? It also makes, you know, 
basically, Leo, this one is for you. <laughs> you make us, you know, uh, you and all the devs. You give us a way to think up creative solution to different problems. Today, all along today, you made us look, take step back to see the bigger picture. It's amazing how you do it. You help us make those connections, which we don't see between different pieces of information. And you're always present and engaged. Positive thinkers lead richer lives that comes out of you to all of us. And really thankful, really thankful. It's just, we're all blessed. We, I mean, God bless you. <laughs> you are amazing. Thank you. Thank you for this. Thank you for giving us an opportunity to invest in Shiva Thank you. And thank, thank you, you community. You guys are incredible. The amount of time I can't thank Roof and so many. I don't want to take names because last time I took names and I missed somebody. <laughs> I got dreams. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm telling you, there are 34 people here, and there were 42 people before. Everybody says you are all incredible, right? Thank There's you. So much Thank positivity you, in this room with you, with Leo, with you, with the, all the devs. It is amazing. Now my kids are dragging me out. I need to leave, but thank you. Thank you, Leo. Yeah, enjoy, man. Have a good one with your kids and your family. Thank you. Appreciate you coming up and talking all the good things that you said. So, yeah, man, we're all in it right now for the pursuit of happiness, right? Um, everybody wants to be happy. Let's give a, let's, you know, let's face it. Uh, a lot of us already might be happy or we may think we're happy, but, you know, staying happy is an important thing too. Um, I've been in dark places in my life before, places that I never want to go back to again. You know, I'm sure everybody has, you know, seen uh, the best of days and i'm sure everybody has seen the worst of days uh that that's the that's the thing that is part of life and you know you can't really change that but what you can change is your mindset and, and your outlook on life and the pursuit of happiness is a, is a real thing and you know being in a place where positivity is kind of influenced uh much more than negativity uh you know your chances of becoming a successful person, a happy person, and um, just a better person is amplified immensely. And, you know, I, I always tell myself, if I walk into a room, if I walk into a room and I'm, I'm the smartest person in that room, then I'm in the wrong room. I do not want to be the smartest person in, in the room. Because if I'm the smartest person in the room, that means I'm putting myself in a position where I'm not going to learn anything new. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be able to better myself. I'm not going to be, you know, I'm not vibing with the right people. My dad used to always tell me when I was a teenager that if you, if you hang out with four dumbasses, you're the fifth dumbass, you know, and I remember that. I'll never forget that. So, <laughs> you know, it's all about positivity guys, you know, make sure you're applying yourself into situations where you're learning something, gaining something and just, you know, spreading that, that positivity, because as long as we're positive together and as long as we work together, you know, we will see great things, you know, other, other than the project doing its thing, us as people will grow. And, you know, we want to be better people too, for ourselves, for our families, for our kids, for our parents, whatever, you know, we want to be good people. The world likes good people. The world needs good people. And, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm proud to, to, you know, talk to you guys. And I feel like everybody in here in this community, you know, deserves, deserves everything that is coming to them. And, um, yeah, that that's pretty much pretty much what I could say about that. Don't hang out with five dumbasses. You'll be the sixth dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. Luckily, we have luckily we have five geniuses uh, in the project, so we are not hanging out with any dumbasses. But exactly, man. Leo, exactly. I would love to add something, and it's it's. It's not a small, it's a very big thank you message to every community in our project, every member in our community. The amount of happiness and positivity they are spreading through the community is something I truly admire and, I'm, and I want the, the community to hear me saying this is rare in the, in the space uh, at these days. We are in the middle of a very extreme bear market. However, every ind individual here is trying to help the other ones, no matter 
how difficult or or tiny the issue or the informa information is i've seen i've seen some community members searching in google trying to bring the accurate information for the people and this is something we should every one of us should be extremely proud of that we we belong to this family we are spreading good amount of information between each other and 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 i did not want to cut you off at the beginning about you have been learning and we have been getting tremendous amount of knowledge just by hanging out together in this bear market so hats off for everyone in the community guys i love you i love how helpful you are and i love how when i feel a bit down in a busy day and or any personal issue i, I have in my life in work or financial or whatsoever i just come to spend couple of hours here with you and you just boost my energy and you make me laugh and you make me just want to go out in life and do more things. So this is for the Thank community you, and thanks for everyone. Thank you, Fahad. We appreciate that. We appreciate everything you said and, and I'm glad you feel the way that you feel because that's what we aim that's what we aim for. You know, we aim we aim for the moon, but we shoot for the stars, right? So we're we're gonna continue to grow as a community. We're gonna continue to you know, make people feel good at, about themselves as time goes on. And we're going to share more knowledgeable things and we're going to advance more as a project. And we're going to bring, you know, those big new things that everybody wants. Um, you know, time is the only battle. That's the only battle that we have is time. You know, that's the only thing that you can't mint more of. You know, you can mint more money. You can mint more cars. You can mint more laptops, whatever. You just can't mint more time. So. You know that's our number one battle we have a very short amount of time um you know on this planet so it's like we got to make the most of it i actually i ordered something the other day and it's uh, you guys could google it too it's called your life in weeks it's called your life in weeks it's like a big picture frame and all it is 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 uh, a bunch of little boxes and every week every week that you live you just go and you check a box up right and why did I order this thing? Like you might look at it and you might think it's stupid. When I first looked at it, I thought it was stupid too. Um, but then I looked at it again and I was like, holy crap, that's a very small amount of boxes that you could fit it in one picture. Are you telling me that once these boxes are all checked, like I'm gonna be 88 years old and probably like, you know, the, on, on like my way to uh, death or, you know, like the end of my life. and uh, it just makes you makes you feel much uh, more connected to your daily experiences and you don't want to waste any time and you don't want to waste uh, a moment because every moment should be precious and you can make a lot happen in a small amount of time. So I really love this thing. I look at it every morning when I wake up, right, because it's in my bedroom and I, every morning I, I look at it and it really kind of like makes me feel more of a uh, person the more i feel less like a cyborg right now because i i gotta admit technology really took over my life for uh for the better you know it's definitely made me uh pretty advanced techno technology but i feel like i'm always glued to something right i'm glued to my phone i'm glued to my laptop i'm glued to a screen all day and i i lost a lot of sense of humanity in a sense and not humanity but like human interaction and this and that like a lot of that is sacrificed in order to do the work that we do, which is fine. I, I, I love doing what I do and I will continue doing what I do. I have an amazing family, amazing daughter. Um, you know, I, I, I get a full, uh, I get the full package out of that. So, you know, I'm happy where I'm at on that end. But when, when I got that thing that, you know, shows you your life in weeks, it really, really just makes you, um, look at things a lot differently because you just tell yourself, it's like, I don't have much boxes left, you know, even though I'm young, I'm, I'm not anywhere close to filling all those boxes up just yet. But, you know, that time will come and, you know, we just got to take every moment uh, that we could get and make the biggest impact that we possibly can in that short amount of time that we possibly can too. So um, I think we're doing a good job. I think we're going to continue doing a good job and I think we're only going to get better and better as time goes on. Um, I, Listen, guys, it's uh, pretty late. I'm going to try to go get some food, um, but this has been great. Uh, I love some of the things that we talked about today. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to be releasing some tweets, a series of tweets, and uh, 
the intention of that is going to be to promote the Thursday Twitter spaces and also promote the Thursday Mint event that we're doing. It's probably going to be like a Halloween themed Mint event because um, we are in the Halloween season. So we'll probably try to do something related to that. Uh, if, if you can, you know, please uh, support that. Please like, retweet, and share it as you guys can. And I'll see you guys back on here on Thursdays AMA. Um, on Twitter spaces. Um, I like to say like last, last week I said, you know, the, the AMAs on Monday that happened in telegram, that's like home. This is home, right? This is where we live. This is where, you know, the family is and the AMAs and the interactions that are going to be happening on the Twitter spaces moving forward. That's like work. We're going to, we're going to treat that very professionally. We're going to treat that like work. So Mondays we talk at home and Thursdays we talk at work. So, uh, I don't know if the guest is going to happen this week. I'm going to try to make it happen this week. Um, I know it's a pretty short notice, but if we don't get a guest for this week's Thursday AMA on Twitter spaces, um, maybe, maybe somebody who's willing to interview me, um, can step up, you know, from the community and fill that spot in for Thursday's AMA. If anyone's willing to do that, reach out to me. I just DM me, Pat said he'll be, he'll be the one. He'll come on. Okay, cool. And maybe you could get some questions prepared. And if I can't get this um, get this guest in line for Thursday, then maybe we could do something like that and have a cool little fun experience. And, you know, it doesn't have to just be one person. If more people are interested in doing it too, you know, you could DM me, you could DM Roof, say you're interested and, you know, get some questions prepared and let's just have some fun. We'll have some fun with everybody on Twitter. Sounds great. Cool. Yeah, guys, that's going to be all for me for today. I'll be in the chat if you guys need me. Feel free to tag me as always. But as always, the punchline, if you miss Doge, that sucks. If you miss Shiba, that also sucks. If you miss Shiba Doge, then you suck. <laughs> all right, guys. As always, peace and love. Later. Cheers, man.